Good evening, everyone. She was 21 and had just graduated from MSUM and was working in TV news here in Fargo. When the Supreme Court decision came down on Roe v. Wade one week ago, Becca Johnson wrote a post on Facebook that rocked her closest friends and family. As WDAY news reporter Kevin Wallivan found out, a rape led to a tough decision that was kept quiet until now. You're watching Campus News. When Becca Johnson left MSUM in 2008, she already had experience working as a reporter and anchor for the campus news program. Students at Minnesota State University Moorhead pay fees for activities, technology, and a new wellness center. After graduation, work at a local TV station. And it was after work on a Sunday night where she and friends went out. Life changed in seconds. We were sitting at the bar and these guys come up and said that they're construction workers from out of town and they asked if they could buy our drinks. And you know, being the poor news reporters fresh out of college that we were. Becca's drink had been drugged. She remembers nothing except waking up a victim of a rape. And the next thing I remember, I woke up in the front seat of my car outside my apartment um, and I had been sexually assaulted and left um, naked from the waist down and I ran into my apartment. Um, my roommate wasn't home at the time and I never talked about it again. Once Becca realized she was pregnant, she says she weighed all her options, and she made an appointment for an abortion at the Red River Women's Clinic in downtown Fargo. Still, nobody knew, but she remembers the day like yesterday. I had been so afraid what everyone would think, like who, you know, who am I going to let down? Today, Becca is married with a beautiful young family, and she's a candidate for city council in a Twin City suburb where she lives. But following the Supreme Court decision just one week ago... It was stunning. It was uh, devastating. Becca herself dropped a bombshell. Nobody knew her story, family or friends. Now is the time that I'm finally going to share this because I know how to speak up for myself now. And for the first time, she told it on Facebook. The support was immediate. So were stories from others who had been through the exact scenario. I was sad for how long I had been holding this story in and didn't feel safe enough to say it until that, that right has been removed. Becca thought long and hard about publicly sharing her very private story. But now as a mother, she felt she had to. Ruby and Lincoln, like they're just that extra motivation for me. I want them to see me do hard things. I want them to see me do um, things that scare me, things that make me cry. And um, I just want them to see that when things are not, when people are not treated fairly, that even if you don't know them, you have an obligation to speak up. Kevin Wallivan, WDAY News. The Rape and Abuse Crisis Center in Fargo tells WDAY News it now has concerns about the rolling back of other laws or policies that protect women from abuse. Violence against women who are pregnant and in dangerous relationships often increases nationwide and here at home. Those who advocate for survivors of domestic violence say limiting access to safe abortions will create a danger for women who are pregnant and in abusive relationships. It's one thing to make decisions based on a belief system, but when your responsibility is to serve a community, beliefs are somewhat irrelevant. This is, this is about what is our ethical responsibility to the community. We have added the extended interview from Rape and Abuse to the story you will find on our website in forum.com.